You're listening to Experience Imagination, a themed entertainment design podcast presented by Falcons Creative Group. Every episode, we discuss a new topic with a panel of creative professionals. Hi, I'm Cecil McPurry, President and Chief Creative Officer of Falcons. Welcome to another episode of Experience Imagination. I'm your host, Audrey DeLong. You might have heard the recent news that Falcons Beyond chose Oceaneering Entertainment Systems to supply all the ride systems in our properties. This is a big deal. How big? Worldwide big. So for those who may not know Oceaneering, they are the world's largest ROV operator. ROV is Remotely Operated Vehicle. And their vehicles can be found deep beneath the sea, in outer space, in the planet's harshest environments, and of course, in world-class attractions across the globe, which is why we're here today. We're going to be talking about that exact topic. So we're going to speak with members of the Oceaneering team who will tell us a little more about what our partnership means and what the future might hold. We're also going to learn what goes into making ride systems and who gets to test them, along with a whole lot of other fun things. First, though... I want to bring in Cecil McPurry. Hi, Cecil. Hi, Audrey. All right, so Falcons and Oceaneering go way back. Go way back. Yeah, we'd love to hear about that history and and why you chose them to be our partner moving forward. Yeah, so the relationship with Oceaneering spans 18 years. It's incredible. You know, we were probably in our third year of business. And, you know, Dave Mock, what an amazing person culturally and capability-wise. And I almost feel like that entertainment division of Oceaneering and Falcons kind of grew together in our journey. They're known for doing the best attraction ride systems in the industry. I mean, bar none. And the stuff that they've done revolves around immersive storytelling ride systems. But more importantly, I think it's the quality and safety that comes with it that makes me feel comfortable to make sure that we've handed our vision of these experiences to someone that's capable and has the right culture. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Big part, definitely. So we're going to get into some of those systems, uh, suspended theater, circuit motion, of course, the dark rides as well. But um, that'll be a fascinating conversation. I want you to circle back with us at the end and give us your thoughts. Yeah, very exciting stuff. All right. So uh, we hope everyone listening joins us for the entire ride today. And please keep all arms, legs, and heads inside the podcast at all times. See you so uh, we look forward to joining you before we disembark. Thank you, Audrey. That was awesome. Yeah. It is my pleasure to introduce Dave Mock and Kyle Classing from Oceaneering Entertainment Systems, which I might refer to as OES. Hello, Dave. Hello, hello. It's good to be here. Thanks for being here. And Kyle, hey to you. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Joining this conversation also is David Schaefer, the Chief Development Officer for Falcons Beyond. Thanks for sharing your time with us on another podcast, David. Thanks so much for having me. All right, we're going to start with Dave Mock. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I did a little LinkedIn research on you. Uh, Have you been with Oceaneering 33 years? Yeah, I started when I was 10. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, 33 years. Yeah, so tell us about your role and actually how it's evolved over all those years to what you're doing today. So uh, my role today is uh, I'm the Vice President and General Manager of the Entertainment Systems Division which, of course, serves theme parks, but uh, we've also got some adjacent markets with wave basins and people mover systems as well. Okay, great. Kyle, I want to talk to you about your role at Oceaneering Entertainment Systems. What do you do? I've been with the company about 10 years, uh, working in a few different capacities and roles. Currently, I'm in business development, so working with our customers to uncover new projects and, and products for our business. Perfect. All right. Well, I want to get into the discussion here, first of all, about the partnership Dave, what makes the partnership with Falcon so special? For me, the, the partnership is special because uh, fundamentally we share the same culture and, and sort of core values. A lot of times the focus really is more on the technical, but experience has proven that especially when projects um, get to the difficult phase, especially when you're pushing the envelope, you know, it really does matter who you're working with, you know, who's in the trench uh, with you. It's a relationship that's been proven over time. And when the shooting starts, uh, so to speak, you can really count on the Falcons team and and Cecil to be right there with you. Yeah, that's well said. David, anything to add to that? Yeah, I think that's perfect. The the types of experiences and attractions that we've collaborated on are 
complicated and intricate, and it truly it takes an entire team to execute. And the regional parks don't have the in-house resources to deliver those types of attractions. So, you know, they rely on external experts to do that. And there truly isn't a single company that can deliver all those aspects. So we need to find the right partners and the right people to push the envelope and deliver those experiences that have all these different elements, you know, or instruments, if you will, kind of coming together to play the music. And Oceaneering has just been an awesome partner in delivering the technology. And so exactly as Dave said, the culture and collaboration has always been awesome. And just knowing that you have an ally in the field to help deliver the project the best that it can be is what makes it so awesome. We both, I think, ingrained in our culture is the understanding or the need to be better, to push the envelopes, uh, to try things and be brave uh, and have courage to get into things that have not been proven and done before. That uh, certainly gets back to the roots of both of our companies, certainly at Oceaneering and all the different fields that we service, the markets that we serve and uh, the types of work that we do each day around the world. Yeah, I think to that point, we're maybe more willing to take some risks on together because we know we'll support each other. I mean, certainly this is not an easy field and and a lot of times there's surprises along the way, but you're more willing to give it a shot when you know, hey, I've got the right team and I've got the right partners and we're going to figure it out together. That's when magic can occur too. Yeah, so Dave, I think David has you beat. He started at Falcons when he was eight, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but let's go back to 2005 when Curse of Dark Castle opened at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. It was a groundbreaking dark ride attraction, but it was also the first collaboration between Falcons and OES. David, what do you remember about that project and how did it set the wheels in motion for other collaborations? Dark Castle was truly groundbreaking and unique, and really it was because of the aspect of bringing an attraction that was a collaboration of multiple partners and a fully integrated experience to a regional park. Certainly some of the big players in the industry were doing that for themselves, but for the regional parks, they didn't have the internal capabilities to develop and deliver attractions of that magnitude. So it really was groundbreaking from the standpoint that it proved that regional parks can deliver custom attractions rather than always purchasing, you know, the off-the-shelf roller coaster or round ride, that they can do stuff that is more complicated and more complex and fully immersive attractions. Which resulted in a Thea Award in this case. Exactly, yeah. One of Falcon's first Thea Awards. Uh, So certainly something that we're very proud of. Excellent. Well, since 2005, there have been more advancements made in dark ride technology. So over to Kyle now. Tell us what OES has been up to in in that regard. Sure. Um, Dark Castle used what has become what we know as the Evo 8 vehicle today. It's our eight-passenger, four-doff tracked ride system. And our Evolution product families um, has scaled since then, both upwards up to 12 passengers, thanks to a, a Falcon's collaboration as well as smaller vehicles. We have a six passenger vehicle now. We're developing a four passenger vehicle due to customer request. And we have our Revolution trackless product family as well, which is also multiple sizes, multiple seating capacity, cabin arrangements, and the theming possibilities are really endless. So with the flexibility of these product lines, we will provide a range of different attractions and experiences for Kathmandu, ranging from you know dynamic, really thrilling type attractions to more kid-friendly, family-oriented experiences. And it's not just the capacity as well. I mean, there's been advancements how the vehicle can actually move. Is that something you can go into as well? Absolutely. Our Revolution product actually came out of customer input for more capacity and being able to bypass vehicles that traditionally follow the leader, you know, has challenges with that. So through that, we developed the trackless platform we still use today to help with the motion characteristics of the vehicle and the load and unload station, but also through the show where the vehicles can dance around each other. You know, they're not driven by a embedded wire in the floor, like a lot of quote unquote trackless products in the industry today. So that's really opened up a lot of the possibilities of what you can do in attraction design and what the vehicle system can do. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. But, you know, dark rides aren't the only systems that our two companies are working on together. There's also the suspended theater, which, you know, we're all really excited about that one. Dave, tell us how that one came together. Independently, Falcons and Oceaneering sort of recognize that a lot of the products sort of give away the gag. I mean, there is no reveal. There's no excitement as you walk in and 
independently, we were working on some solutions that would uh, bring that together. After comparing some notes, we realized that there were collaborative ideas here, and uh, we were very happy to sign up and be part of Falcon's Suspended Theater Solution and bring some of the technology that we had in development alongside there. I'm excited for this to debut because it's not going to be simply another system. It will be truly unique in that it's the surprise is the feature you know, not a large visible mechanism as in the offerings of most of our competitors. Yeah, I think one of the cool things about Suspended Theater is we've been collaborating on it from the ground up, truly from when it was napkin sketches together or or just, you know, whiteboarding out concepts. We've been together every step of the way. And so I think that results in a product that is just far superior on so many different levels. Yeah, I mean, it's such a competitive industry that you really have to do a lot of research, I would imagine, to stay kind of ahead of the curve. Kyle, tell us how Oceaneering manages to do that so frequently and successfully. I'd say it boils down to two things primarily. One is we listen to our customers and we focus on continuous quality improvement. That's not only with our products, but how we execute our projects, the services we offer. Two is we actively seek out business and technical challenges and bring it back to camp, as we say and focus on creating innovative solutions around those. So we're continuously doing that. Fortunately, we're a large global company. We do work in a lot of different industries. Mm -hmm. So we're able to leverage a lot of the technologies we apply in other areas and bring it into the entertainment business, which has been very successful for us. Yeah, it really does take a small village, right, David, to to move the needle in the themed entertainment industry, especially when the appetite for immersion keeps getting stronger and stronger. It feels it feels to me like having Oceaneering as a partner will give us a big advantage. What is your perspective on that? With the collaboration with Oceaneering, I feel like anything is achievable. I think technology is great, but you know it needs to serve a purpose, and there should be a story that is truly driving what the technology needs are. And now we're looking at new advancements of introducing greater levels of guest agency and interactivity to where attractions and the experiences can react to guest input. And truly, it's the partnership and the collaboration that makes that happen. If we didn't have that, we would be limited to what is available in the marketplace. And so you'd always kind of be a little bit behind the curve rather than pushing the new developments forward yourselves. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned storytelling because the tagline for Oceaneering Entertainment Systems is helping storytellers move your audience. Dave, how does the ride vehicle itself contribute to the overall guest experience? Well, hopefully the ride vehicle, well executed, disappears in the immersion. You know, our tagline is a signal that it really isn't about us. We really try to listen to what is the overall objective? What is the story? And we are simply there to support as a medium the conveyance of a story to a certain guest experience that's desired. What Dave just said there is key to the strength of the relationship. The fact that Oceaneering understands that aspect of it and that their motivation is to ultimately deliver the best guest experience, not just push product to make the sale, that truly they they recognize the fact that you have to be thinking about the appropriate use of the technology. And it just strengthens that collaboration to make sure that the attractions and experiences we produce together are top notch. Yeah, we hit a lot of great points here. Um, Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, Dave Mock, for joining us. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Kyle Classing, thank you. Thank you again. Really appreciate it. David Schaefer, thanks again. Thanks so much. It's been a lot of fun. Now I'd like to welcome to the podcast, Nathan Marks, who is a project manager at Oceaneering. Hi, Nathan. Hey there. How are you guys doing? We're great. Thanks for joining. Uh, Also at the table, Joe Schaefer, Senior Technical Design Manager at Falcons. Hello, hello. And we have Adam Yurden calling in. He's a project manager at Falcons. Thanks for being here, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Nathan, I want to start with you. And uh, first of all, what is your role at OES, and how do you work with companies like Falcons? Primarily, I'm a project manager for Oceaneering, so I'll handle everything from design builds to products to bids and proposals, all the way through commissioning and handover. So kind of a little bit of everything. All right. So we know Adam is is in contact with Oceaneering a lot. Adam, I want to know what sort of things do you oversee for Falcons, and how do you work with OES? My job from the Falcon side is to ensure that the milestones are being met, projects on budget, and the projects maintaining the creative intent. 
Uh, more specifically, I interact with Nathan and some of his project engineers to ensure that we're providing them with documentation that they need to design these giant machines that we use for storytelling. This could be uh, giving them the concept deck that has artwork, a storyline of the project, or just some facility schematics showing you know, walls, doorways, supporting their side of things, as well as making sure that everything on our side is covered, of course. So you come in after kind of the beginning stages, which I wanted to go back over to Joe now, um, because there are initial steps that have to be taken before we even engage oceaneering on a project. So how do you prep them for what's coming? We've been working with Oceaneering for uh, quite a while now, and uh, we understand what their system needs are, be it track layouts or clearance envelopes or anything like that. So we can start developing that before they're even brought on. Now, when they are brought on, most of the time they'll come back through our designs and they may make some modifications or optimizations to those layouts that we've produced Mm -hmm. um, in an effort to ease up some of the strain or on the system or uh, just make the overall experience better. Right. That's interesting that you mentioned that because you mentioned a storytelling aspect. And and I wanted to get around to this with Nathan. Have you seen how a ride vehicle can actually enhance a guest experience? 100%. That's exactly what we are there to do. It's a delicate balance. We want our technology to kind of fade away into the background um, because if they are noticing what our ride vehicle is doing that takes their focus away from the show and, you know, kind of being immersed in what that experience really needs to be. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, Falcons has kind of a similar philosophy. We don't want the technology to be front and center. I mean, we want the technology to be part of the story and how the story is told. Yeah, the ride system adds a visceral element that kind of plays collaboratively with the storyline. And when you have an attraction that those two things don't line up or clash with each other, it is detracting from the essence of what you're trying to portray in the attraction. Exactly. It can come down to, do you need a motion base? Do you not need a motion base? You know, does the motion base need to feel like you're floating on a cloud or does it need to be really hard and abrupt type of movements? Does it, you know, do you need to spin in circles? Do you not need to spin in circles? So it's all those mm-hmm. questions we can answer once there's a score. The acceleration is really the, the thing that we try to really push the most because, you know, how fast can I get in and out of a scene, um, which gives more show time for that scene? You know, how fast can I make an actuator move? How fast can I make the yaw move um, as opposed to what the top speed of that yaw is? Since I don't need to spin people around, you know, super, super fast, I just need to get them moving quickly. That's exactly right. I mean, if you think about it, realistically, the human body can't discern velocity. Yep. So it doesn't matter how fast it moves or it, it, the human body is hardwired to be able to tell small details and acceleration. So the higher acceleration values we can have on these systems, the more of a visceral reaction you'll have on mm. the attraction. This topic brings me to circuit motion which provides a unique feeling for guests. This is another ride we developed. Um, We deployed it at IMG World of Adventure in Dubai. Tell us about that, Joe. Yeah, so that's another attraction that we designed here at Falcons. Um, It's actually really unique in that it's an incredibly visceral experience. And one of the things that makes it so special is that the fact that the media and the motion base are so well synced that even though it's a spinning platform, there's never a feeling of motion sickness or dizziness because those two things are so in harmony. Yeah, and the synchronization between the media and the platform is something we've been working on and tweaking and continuing to develop. Yeah, and that's something that we've been perfecting for over 20 years now is that perfect marrying between the ride system and the media that goes with it. And there's all kinds of special effects that you can use to enhance the story too. Is Joe, is that something that you guys know, like, You know you want to have wind, scent, water spritz maybe. Do you know that beforehand? Yeah, so that'll generally come out of the concept. So we'll develop the concept for the attraction, develop a storyline, and then we'll kind of start putting together the beats, how the scenes break down, and how do we split the story into those scenes. And then once we have that, then we start developing, okay, what are we doing in this scene and how can we enhance it? Is there a way we can enhance it with some sort of SFX? Is it heat? Is it cold? Is it wind? Is it scent? And we try to work those in to make the experience even more than it was originally. And what's fascinating is it can be something as simple as just a fan blowing a gentle breeze on someone that can really make or break the experience itself, you know? hey, I'm just looking at a screen and now a breeze is blowing on me that suggests, oh, 
now we're moving. Oh, wow, this is, you know, now it's something more than just sitting on a bench watching a, a video, you know, it, it really kind of immerses that guest. Tell us, Joe, when you were working on IMG Worlds of Adventure, uh, there were two dark rides that I know you worked closely on the Avengers Dark Ride and... Uh, that was Lost Valley, Forbidden Territory. Yeah, I was yeah. a baby. That was the very first project I started working on here at Falcons. Um, the Avengers vehicle was enormous. Mm. We built a mock-up, a full-scale, one-to-one size mock-up of the vehicles out of wood. It was plywood, it was boards, and that was to get an idea of what the sight lines were going to be, what the guest experience was going to be like sitting in there, and they had fold-out chairs, right? It was just the frame of the body built out of wood. Um, But you could tell, as a guest, what you'd be able to see, what you couldn't, where our sight lines were, and that's critical information when you're designing an attraction to know where that cutoff line is for all the guests in the vehicle. So Joe, yeah, you talked about sight lines and what the guest is able to see and why that's so important. This is a good segue to our suspended theater attraction system, which is a flying theater. Adam, tell us how it works and also what makes it so special. So what's really unique about the suspended theater is as a guest, you walk into the theater and you sit down and you really don't think of it as anything but a standard theater. You sit down, you got the big silver screen in front of you and everything, and the show starts, and you're enjoying a nice 2D or 3D film, and then all of a sudden, you're lifted straight up, up into a second screen. You know, it's a huge reveal. Yeah, that's a good point, Adam. When when the guest is lifted skyward, there's this incredible vista, this spectacular media, it's immersive storytelling. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. No, not at all. It, it is absolutely incredible. Yes, yeah, so we've talked a lot about the design process of these attraction systems. Now let's talk about the installation process. Nathan, what's your role in that? We are there to make sure everything gets installed correctly, installed safely, and then really testing the ride system. So we do a lot of testing of all the vehicles in the ride system before they even leave our facility. So we're very confident and comfortable with vehicle performance, that it's going to operate the way that it's intended. Uh, when we get onto the site, we're tying our system into everybody else's systems. So we're tying into the show system, we're tying into the actual facility, all of their safety systems. And we just need to make sure that our ride system interacts appropriately with all of those systems. Um, because once the attraction does start going and guests are in the building, safety is always going to be the number one thing that everybody's worried about. Uh, but then once all of that stuff is done and everybody's comfortable and we can start putting people on the ride, that's when the kind of the, the fun gets going is when we can start turning the lights on and the media and the AV and start really programming the ride vehicle to give that feeling that, you know, is really going to enhance that show. To me, that's the probably the most fun part on site is, is getting to that stage where it's it's really playing with the system and you know getting the most out of the system. Yeah. Adam, what's your take on, on that whole piece of the action? For the very first time you power up, you know, a ride vehicle or a control system, something like that, you really get to see the scope of what you're about to do. And it isn't until you see it move for the first time, you're like, wow, this really is, you know, this is a big thing. This is really happening. And as Nathan was talking about, there are a ton, ton of checks. You know, very first thing, you put one vehicle on the track. There might be 20 vehicles. You put one on the track and you'll run it around for up to two weeks just to verify that timing is correct, that the computer is seeing it correctly, Mm -hmm. um, that everything is responding to the system the way it should. You adjust, you tweak, then you put a second vehicle on. Now you've duplicated what you did for the first vehicle, but now you see what happens with two of them because you want to make sure that the two vehicles aren't going to run into each other. And it's a month or more of just testing the system before we can even start training park operations, park maintenance, before we can hand it over to where you know, even the first guest is going to start enjoying it. Yeah, you start to see how much really goes into this process. Nathan, I'm wondering, do you get to test the vehicles that you work on? How often do you get to do that? And, and are you usually the first guy in line to do that? So, yes, I get to test them. I, I spend a lot of time riding in these vehicles. No, I'm usually not the first guy that gets to do it. I usually reserve that for the people that are, you know, turning the wrenches and doing all that kind of work. I really like them to get on and do that stuff. Nice. I absolutely love once it's done and, you know, we're putting guests on it, even if it's just park operations and, Mm -hmm. you know, park management and, and that stuff. People have never ridden it before. I love standing at the unload platform and kind of seeing 
you know, when they come around into that unload area and, you know, what kind of expressions do they have on their faces, you know, seeing that that's the reward for the years of hard work and, and stress and everything that we go through is, you know, just that one person jumping off the ride saying they loved it. I mean, that to me is unreal. It's such a good experience. When you've put blood, sweat and tears into a project and to really be able to, to open it up and see everybody enjoy it. I mean, they, they have no idea how much time you put into it. They don't even care. They just want to go have fun. And to be able to see them be able to put aside their lives, you know, they, they've maybe they've had a rough week and they show up to the park and they get on the ride. That's really something that makes it all worth it. To walk through or to go on the experience that you worked to ideate that came out of the collective team that you were on's head. It's almost unreal because it's come to life. And I mean, it's it's exciting to be a guest and go on these rides. It's, it's always fun. I mean, we do it for the guests and people enjoy it. And I mean, that's why we do what we do. Well said. Well, guys, I mean, that wraps up everything that, that we have for you. Thank you so much for joining us, Nathan. Sure. Thanks for having me, guys. This is fun. Thank you, Adam, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having this uh, conversation for us. And Joe Schaefer, thanks again for being on the podcast. Of course. Happy to be here. All right, Cecil, welcome back to the table. What are your thoughts on all of this? Wow, what an incredible conversation. Some deep, deep processes that, you know, we live it and breathe it, but to talk about it and reflect on it, it's profound. And I think that's one of the reasons why I think these are really special. It takes a lot of brain power for these experiences to get executed. Yeah. And so what I'm really excited about is obviously the realization of these products in unique platforms that consumers will not expect it to be in. You know, the oh, level yeah. of immersion and storytelling experiences like we're producing in regional parks and our own theme parks. Yeah, uh, how exciting. The flexibility on the programming aspects of them. It's it could be fun and playful. Or it could be thrilling and scary. The capability spans those spectrums. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll be on a future podcast talking about these and the guest experience as they expand into the market. But for now, that uh, wraps up our topic on, on our oceaneering partnership and what we're going to be doing with them in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Audrey. Thank you, Cecil. And uh, we'd like to thank our other guests from Oceaneering, Dave Mock. Kyle Classing and Nathan Marks, and from Falcons, David Schaefer, Adam Yurden, and Joe Schaefer. And to everyone who listened to this episode, thank you. We appreciate you, and we hope you'll be on board with us next time. Thank you for listening to Experience Imagination, a Falcons Creative Group production. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and share with your friends. To keep up with our latest news, visit us on the web at falconscreativegroup.com. And follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future episodes, please email us at podcast at falconscreativegroup.com.